Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what we're going to do is look at a projectile motion problem involving a basketball player shooting a free throw. So here's how I've set up the problem. Here's our basketball player. He stands a distance of 15 feet away from the rim. Um, as he's holding the ball above his head, it's a little bit higher than his height. So we're going to assume that that height here where the ball starts is 7 feet above the ground. I am going to launch the ball at 45 degrees. However, I'm not telling you how fast. That's actually going to be one of the questions. How fast do I have to launch this basketball in order for it to go through the basket? And the basket, again, is 15 feet away. And the basket for a regulation size basketball net is 10 feet above the ground. So this is what I'm giving you as the information. So let's look at all the problems. Uh, first one, as I mentioned, calculate that uh, velocity V0. Again, I'm fixing that angle to be 45 degrees. Uh, next question, how much time does it take to do that full trajectory? Uh, question three, what is the maximum height? Right, what is this? The maximum height is somewhere over here. What is this maximum height? You can say, for example, above the ground or above the point where he's shooting from. Right, how would I solve for that? And the last part is, what is the speed of the ball as it passes through the hoop? So how fast is it going? And also, what is the angle that the ball is making as it goes through that rim if I've uh, shot the basketball correctly? Okay, so again, let's try to solve all these problems here associated to projectile motion. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Consider subscribing to my channel and give the video a thumbs up if you like it. And if you don't like it, just move on. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is, since we're going to work with projectile motion, and in all the projectile motion equations, I use the acceleration due to gravity equals to 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. So let's work in SI units. So that means we have to convert our feet into meters. So we're going to use the conversion over here. Uh, one meter is approximately equal to 3.28 uh, feet, uh, which means that this distance here, 15 feet, um, is approximately equal, hopefully I did this correctly, 4.572 meters. And what else? The other thing I'm going to need is, what is the vertical displacement? Again, I'm starting at 7 feet, and I'm going to 10 feet. So I'm also going to need kind of 3 feet, the difference between both of those. And 3 feet is like 0 0.9144 meters. Okay, so I have everything I, I need right now. I'm going to call this horizontal displacement. I'm going to give that the letter L. And I'm going to call this vertical displacement, I'm going to call this H. Okay, so H is kind of this height here if I put it on the diagram, right? That's only three feet. Because I'm starting at seven feet and the basketball hoot is 10 feet off the ground. All right, let's first set up our equations. So we're going to need a coordinate system to start off with. I'm going to use a standard coordinate system where I have my X axis this way. And I'm going to have my vertical axis like this. And we need to write an equation for the x direction and for the y direction. So in the x direction, again, I'm looking for the displacement. In this case, I know the displacement is delta x. And I know I'm going to go a certain distance l. So that is actually my displacement. Uh, if you remember now from your class, the uh, projectile motion equation for the x direction simply looks like the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by time. And that's it. It's really simple in the x direction. Uh, in the vertical direction, this is what I want. I want my displacement in the vertical direction actually to be equal to the height. And again, now if I write down that equation, it looks a little bit different. I have the initial velocity in the vertical direction multiplied by time. And now I have this second term, which you can't forget about, minus 1 half gt squared. Now think about what we know and what we don't know in this problem. right? We know L and we know H because they're given right here at the top. I also don't know what the initial velocity is because that's actually my first question right here. And I don't know time. So I have two equations and I actually have two unknowns and that's what I have to solve for. To make this a little bit more uh, simpler, what we're going to do here is let's eliminate these initial velocity terms. It's, let's write it in terms of the initial velocity of the projectile because remember what we have here. We're launching this guy at some initial velocity V0 and we're launching it at 45 degrees. So this is what it looks like, right? If this is my initial velocity as a vector and the angle is 45 degrees, that means it looks something like this, 
right? This would be my initial velocity in the x direction, and the initial velocity in the y direction would look like this guy. So this I should be able to write right away, because I can write it in terms of the magnitude of this initial velocity, and multiplied by cos of the angle theta. And this one here I can write as v naught sine of the angle theta. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to substitute um, our initial velocities for both of those terms, just to make the equations a little bit simpler. So we have L equals to V naught cos of theta. And again, theta is 45 in this, right? So let's not forget that. Theta is always 45 degrees. Uh, multiplied by time. So this is really going to be my equation one. And my equation two is my vertical displacement is V naught sine of the angle theta multiplied by time and minus one half gt squared. This here is equation two. So let's think about what the unknowns are. The unknowns, I have two of them. It's v naught and I have time. These are the unknowns. We have two of them and we have two equations. So at this point, all the physics is done. What we have to do now is do a little bit of math in order to solve for both of those. All right, so this is how you solve for it now. So I've rewritten both equations right here. I'm going to start with equation one. And from equation one, what I'm going to do is just get an expression for time. So that's easy. Time is going to be that distance L and divided by V naught cos of the angle theta. And that's it. That's the expression for time that I have. Let's kind of box that one up. We might come back to this one a little bit later. And now all I want to do here is I want to substitute that into this one and this one and eliminate time from equation two. And once I do that, I'm going to have just one expression where the only unknown is V zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So kind of give myself a bit more space here. So we have h equals to v naught. Don't worry about the algebra. Don't get intimidated by that. You'll see it simplifies a little bit. OK, so my first instance of time is this one. And I'm going to replace it by this green box, v naught cos of the angle theta. And then I still have the second term. Don't forget about that. And now we're going to have to square everything. So I'm going to just do it right away, right? Because it's t squared. So that means I have l squared here. And I'm going to have v naught squared. I'm going to have cos squared of theta. All right, there's a whole bunch of terms there. All right, let's see what can simplify now. The uh, first thing you notice here is we have v naught in the numerator and we have v naught in the denominator. Now, for this specific problem, we have another simplification right here. Because of this angle here being 45 degrees, if you remember from trigonometry, uh, this here is actually square root of root uh, square root of two over two, but it's actually also equal to cos of 45 degrees. So what does that mean for this first term? That means that this term is actually going to be equal to this term. So I can simplify that. All right. So at the end, we can simplify the right hand side into something that is much simpler to handle. Okay. Um, oh, let's maybe do one more substitution here. Look what we have over here in the denominator. We have cos squared of theta. So imagine if I was going to do cos squared of 45 degrees. What would that be? Well, I'd simply have to square this term. So that would be 2 over 4, which gives me 1 half. OK, so let's go ahead and eliminate this. And we can replace that with 1 half. And the reason I want to do that is because, again, you're going to simplify. We have a 1 half here, and we have a 1 half down there. All right, so that leads us to a much simpler expression for the height h. And it looks like this. It's L minus. Now, I have, still have two terms over here. I have little g. I have L squared. And I have V naught squared. But that's it, right? This is a much simpler expression. And the nice thing about it is that the only unknown in this expression, there it is. It's V naught. So let's rewrite this expression and solve for V naught and get our first number over here. All right, so we're going to do some algebra over here. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's bring uh, this second term here to the left-hand side just to make it positive. So we have little g L squared over V naught squared equals L minus H. OK, I just brought the H back on the other side. And again, I'm just isolating for V naught. So let's bring that on this side and bring the L minus H uh, down at the bottom over here. So one more step here. So you should have V naught squared is going to be equal to g l squared over l minus h. 
Okay, what you could do now to eliminate that square is to simply take the square root on both sides. Okay, if I take the square root on both sides, you can do this. And if you wanted to just kind of clean it up just a little bit more, uh, sometimes teachers appreciate that. Uh, L minus H, if I take one of the L's out of the square root, I could have something like this, L. All right, and that's it. All we have to do now is substitute the values in here, and we're pretty much done. So let me go ahead and do it over on this side, so V naught. All right, so we're going to have the square root. We have 9, uh, 9.8 for our acceleration due to gravity. Now, remember, we calculated uh, what those values were for L and H, and that was kind of on the first slide that I had. But for L, I had 4.572. That was 15 feet converted into meters. And then I had to subtract the height. Uh, the height was 3 feet, and 3 feet was equivalent to 0 0.9144 if I did that correctly. And again, you can't forget to multiply by the length here. The length is still my 4.572. Okay, so that's it. So all you have to do now is simply multiply that. Let me just make a line here so we don't mix that up. All right, and at the end, if I did the calculation correctly, I should obtain V naught, which is approximately equal to uh, 7.48, and that's in meters per second. Okay, so there is really the answer to problem one. That would be the initial velocity that if I launched it at 45 degrees with this initial velocity, it would actually end up traveling 15 feet this way, and it would have a displacement in the vertical direction of 3 feet, which is what we want if the ball is going to enter that rim. All right, so good job on number one. Let's now go through and look at the time that it takes to pass through the rim. Okay, so to calculate uh, number two, the time, uh, what you have to remember is that in the x direction, my x displacement, which was the length, right, this guy right here uh, in meters, um, that was equal to the initial velocity in the x direction, which we had written like this, multiplied by the time. Well, if I go back to this expression now, I know what the initial velocity is. I calculated that in the first part. I know the angle is 45, and I know my distance was like 4.572 meters. So that's it. All right, let's rewrite this and calculate what the time is to get to that position. So it's simply L divided by V naught cos of the angle theta. Let's substitute all our values. So we have 4.572 uh, over, uh, what else? V naught we just calculated, so 7.48. And we have cos of 45 degrees. Okay, that's it, just plug and chug. And you should obtain that the time to get to that position Again, assuming I did everything correctly, I get 0 0.864 uh, seconds. Beautiful. So that's problem two. Let's go on to problem three now. What's the maximum height? All right, problem three says let's look for the maximum height. So we have highlighted that point right here in blue. And the one thing you should remember about this specific point right here is that the vertical velocity has to be equal to zero at that point, right? And if you remember the equation for the velocity at any instant in time for projectile motion, it's always the initial velocity in that vertical direction minus the acceleration multiplied by time. So we need to find really how much time does it take to get to the top right here. But we know that the velocity is zero. So what you can do is substitute zero right here. And this guy, we're going to use our same expression that we've used previously, uh, V naught multiplied by sine theta minus little g times t. And this is really the time it takes to go to the top. All right, so let's get one expression for that. So just solve for t right here, and you should get uh, initial velocity multiplied by sine of theta divided by little g. This is to get to the top. All right, so kind of important. Again, we know everything in this problem. You can get a number for that. But let's go ahead now and find what our vertical displacement is. That's really what our maximum height is. So let me just call it max. Uh, the equation looks very, very similar to the second equation I previously had. It's the initial velocity in the vertical direction uh, multiplied by time and minus one half uh, gt squared. Okay, you could take this one step further. We can eliminate this initial velocity in the vertical direction, uh, v naught sine of the angle theta. Now the time, you could either get a number right here and substitute it into this equation, or I can take the whole expression and substitute it into the equation. All right, so let me do that. It's V naught sine of theta divided by little g. That's the time. 
uh, minus one half little g and now i have to square this whole term uh, v naught sine of the angle theta divided by little g and don't forget to square that whole term so at the end what you're going to find if we do some algebra here uh, the maximum height look at here you're going to get v naught sine of the angle theta you're going to get that squared but you're only going to have one g in this first term it looks exactly the same as this second term except this one here is a factor of one half in front of it so that means really at the end what you're going to end up getting is one half v naught squared sine squared theta divided by little g okay so i know everything in this problem here uh, what i can do is simply substitute the values and proceed okay so we're going to have one half uh, v naught is uh, the value i had 7.48 meters per second uh, square that thing sine squared of 45 degrees and what else divided by 9.8 uh, meters per second squared okay at the end what you end up getting if I substitute everything in the calculator if I do things correctly I should get approximately 1.425 meters now if you want to convert that to feet uh, you can go ahead and do that because we know the conversion that I previously had uh, on the paper uh, one meter was 3.28 so that means times 3.28 will give me a height of approximately four point now yeah, let's just write it four point seven feet now if you go back to this figure again we're calculating the height relative to where we started so that simply means that the height right here this is the four point seven feet that i'm calculating or the one point four two five meters okay it's always relative to that point if you want to calculate it relative to the ground you would have to add the seven feet to this figure Okay, so hopefully this makes sense to you. Again, you could have first calculated the time and then substitute that time into both of those values and you would have gotten to the same expression that I got. All right, so let's go to the last problem now. All right, and our last problem here, let's clean this up a little bit. Let's find what is the speed of the ball when it passes through the rim and let's find the angle which it passes through the rim. So again, what we're really looking at here is a ball that is going through the rim like this. So we need to find what this velocity is and then find the magnitude of that velocity. And then if we know both components, we can also find the angle pretty straightforward. So this is kind of what it looks like when it goes through the rim. It has some velocity, uh, which means I can break that down into components, which means it has a horizontal velocity Vx. And what else? So it has to have a vertical velocity. And this, it's probably going down, so it's going to look something like this. And this is the angle which it's going through the rim. And I'm calling it theta, but it's, it's different from 45. Uh, actually, let's choose a different variable. Let's choose alpha just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, so what we need now are expressions for each component of the velocity, and that'll allow us to solve for it. So again, we're going to have two equations. Our first is for the horizontal component, and that one's easy because it's always the initial component for projectile motion. So this is simply v naught cos of 45 degrees. That never changes. In the vertical direction, what do we have? Well, we're going to have our v naught y and minus little g and multiplied by time. How much time does it take to get to this point? So this one here, we could take this a step further. Let's take get rid of the initial velocity and write it in terms of the angle and the magnitude of the initial velocity. So we have v naught. Uh, sine of 45 degrees and minus little g multiplied by time. Okay, so I can calculate both of those because I know the time that I have to evaluate this. All right, so let's go over here and I'll calculate things. So uh, Vx is going to be equal to uh, 7.48 multiplied by cos of 45 degrees. All right, I think I did that correctly. That should give me 5.29 meters per second that's our x component and my vertical component again substituting into my second expression here we get 7.48 uh, sine of 45 in this case uh, minus 9.8 and again the time that you're going to use over here be careful with this one it's the time that we calculated previously right 0.864 seconds okay 
So plug that into the calculator and lo and behold, you get a negative number and that's okay. 3.18 meters per second. The negative sign simply tells me the direction and I know the direction is going straight down. All right, what we wanna do now is calculate the magnitude of this vector right here. So for this, you simply use Pythagorean and we have Vx squared plus Vy squared. Okay, these are my Vx and my Vy values. Pretty straightforward to do that. Uh, put that one in your calculator and I think I found 6.17 meters per second. All right, my last little bit that I want to do is I want to find what this angle is. But again, if you know everything about this triangle, we should be able to use some trigonometry uh, in order to solve that. All right, so let me kind of go over here and I'll do this last section. I'm going to use tangent. Okay, so it says tangent of the angle alpha is the opposite over the adjacent. So in this case, it's Vy. It's a magnitude over Vx. And here I'm just going to put the magnitude here. So it's going to be 3.18. So alpha is the inverse of Vy over Vx. Okay. Uh, alpha equals tan of minus 1. What would you get here? 3.18 uh, over 5.29. All right, put that in the calculator. In the end, the last thing we're going to get is that angle. Uh, calculator was in degrees, and I calculated 31.0 uh, degrees. Okay, that was the angle at which this ball here is entering the rim. So I'm launching it at 45, but up here, I'm still three feet above the launching point. Uh, the angle is making uh, an angle of 31 degrees with respect to the horizontal, the way I've defined it here. All right, folks, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you understood this problem.